coming up next on the season 13 finale of Making Moves. Football has returned to Jacksonville, and so too has the best way to get to the stadium, JTA's Game Day Express. We'll check out the new and improved shuttle service and ride along with Jaguar fans for the first preseason game. Do you have a college student in the house? Find out about a new pilot program offering free rides on JTA through the end of the year. Transportation and JTA is about giving students options. So with this pass, students have the option to use it once a week, five times a week, or even on the weekends to go to their job. JTA is offering up $15,000 in signing bonuses to new driver candidates. Find out what has the authority opening its wallet and how you can grab your piece of the pie. And we'll tell you why a team of transportation officials from Atlanta were in town observing how JTA runs its operations. I was excited to bring myself and my team to the Jacksonville Transportation Authority to really learn about some of the innovative things that Jacksonville is doing, not only for the citizens here, but broader application to the public transit industry. These stories and more are all coming up right now on the season 13 finale of Making Moves. Welcome to the season 13 finale of Making Moves. I'm Bill Milnes. Thanks for joining us today. I'm sure I don't have to tell most of you that the 2021 football season has officially arrived. That means the Jacksonville Jaguars have started their 27th season playing in the NFL. Since 1995, the JTA has transported well over a million fans to the stadium. The Game Day Express didn't run last year due to the pandemic, but the service is now back in full force, but with a few changes. Now, since its inception, the Game Day Express has operated its main lot across from the convention center in La Villa. That space is now being readied for the construction of 91 two-story townhomes. So the JTA signed an agreement with FSCJ to move its primary Game Day Express lot to the school's downtown campus. The FSCJ lot is one of five lots where fans can pick up the shuttle. Other locations include the Kings Avenue parking garage on the South Bank, JTA's park and ride lot at Phillips, and JTB, JTA's Armsdale Park and Ride facility near Lem Turner and I-295, and at Wingate Park on Penman Road in Jacksonville Beach. Another new twist to this year's service is that it is now a cashless system. Passes for the Game Day Express are now purchased exclusively on the free MyJTA mobile app. Season passes to all eight home games are now only $50 at all locations, you may remember that season passes for the suburban lots were previously $90. That's a 45% discount. Single game passes start at just $8. The start of the football season is always exciting, but for one JTA employee, this first game in particular was extra special. Bus operator Kendarius Fitzpatrick had the honor of delivering the game ball to Jacksonville Jaguars mascot Jackson DeVille before the game. Now that is exciting. If you haven't been down to the sports complex in a while, you might be surprised at what you will and won't find. The elevated Hart Expressway between the bridge and the eastern portion of downtown is now completely gone. The expressway made travel easier, but by most accounts was an eyesore along the riverfront. So the Curry administration used federal grant dollars to tear down the structure. And in mid-August, new ramps from the Gator Bowl Boulevard to the bridge were open to traffic. The $39 million project began more than a year ago. Plans also call for new ramps from A. Philip Randolph Boulevard to the Hart Expressway near the Shipyards property to complete the project. Now, Jaguars owner Shad Khan has proposed a new $441 million riverfront development with a Four Seasons Hotel and condo complex, offices, an upgraded marina, a sports medicine facility, retail, and a parking garage where the elevated expressway once stood. In other news, as the deadly Delta variant of the coronavirus continues its assault on Florida, 
Thousands of citizens here in Northeast Florida remain unvaccinated. Here's a snapshot of the county by county vaccination rates as of August 12th. St. John's County is far and away the best performer so far with nearly 70% of its residents vaccinated, while Baker County lags far behind with under 40%. Duval County is at 56%. St. John's County, as we said, just under 70%. Clay County, 49%. Baker at 38%. Nassau County at 58%. JGA continues to be a major player in the effort to get as many citizens in Duval County vaccinated as possible. The authorities' Wellness on Wheels mobile vaccination buses have provided nearly 10,000 free vaccinations to local residents. The Wellness on Wheels initiative is a partnership with Agape Family Health and has garnered recognition from around the country for its efforts. Now JTA is doing it again with a new partner, Uber. Uber Florida's senior public affairs manager, Jave Corioso, said in a press release announcing the program that transportation should not be a barrier to vaccine access. Working with the Jacksonville Transportation Authority, we are proud to support their ride to health efforts to significantly boost access to COVID-19 vaccines by providing transportation to and from vaccine appointments. Through the end of September, Uber is providing free door-to-door -door rides to and from any COVID-19 vaccination site in 10 neighborhoods with limited transportation access. Uber is subsidizing 100% of the cost of approximately 4,000 rides. Now here's a list of the 10 local zip codes that are eligible for the free Uber rides to a vaccine site. They include 32202, 04, 05, 06, 08, 09, 32218, 1920, and 32254. JTA CEO Nat Ford said the Ride to Health program was created to improve access to critical pandemic resources in our community. This program builds on that mission by ensuring underserved areas disproportionately impacted by the pandemic are not left behind as our city moves forward in getting vaccinated. The program will run through Thursday, September 30th. Trips can be scheduled any day between the hours of 7 a.m. and 6 p.m. at no cost to the customer as long as the trip is under $25. You will need to fill out the Uber application. The application is required to claim your trip voucher and can be downloaded from both the Apple and Android application sites. Up next on Making Moves, Eugene Lindsay is back with tips on prepping for an evacuation and how JTA prepares to weather the storm without losing its fleet. Uh, we ensure that all of our buses and fuel tanks uh, and above ground storage fuel tanks are full. Um, and we prepare our satellite locations if we need to use them. Uh, we have two satellite locations uh, where we can store and stage buses. Then we'll find out why some Atlanta Transit executives made the trek to Jacksonville to check out how JTA operates. I was excited to bring myself and my team to the Jacksonville Transportation Authority to really learn about some of the innovative things that Jacksonville is doing not only for the citizens here, but broader application to the public transit industry. That's all next when Making Moves continues. Hey dad, I need your help asking Jessica to prom. Of course. Love is like the ocean. You have to tread the Oh waters. dad, that's not the kind of help I needed. Hey, Jessica. I, um. Will you go to prom with me? Yes. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care can't wait to share their first with you. I don't remember how it started. Go to that. Our back and forth. It always came back. Dad! You probably don't remember what you told me. That was perfect. But I heard every word. You're watching Making Moves, the most honored transportation news and information program of its kind in the country. Welcome back to Making Moves. On our last show, Making Moves senior correspondent Eugene Lindsay gave us a refresher course on how to prepare for the next big storm. And if you've lived in Florida for more than a week, you already know that there is always 
a next big storm. And there's also the chance that you may have to evacuate your home and go either to a shelter or another safer location. Now in part two of his hurricane preparation series, Eugene tells us everything we need to know about evacuating and discusses what JTA does to protect its fleet and facilities in the event of a hurricane so that transportation is always available after the storm is gone. A hurricane with its massive winds and torrential downpours can be devastating, leaving in its wake flooding and destruction. Once there's a threat of a hurricane in the forecast and its path focused on your neck of the woods, you'll definitely want to be prepared, helping to prepare you for the best possible experience before, during, and after the storm the Jacksonville Emergency Operations Center is on the front line when it comes to monitoring the storm's path and strategizing the most effective plan to keep you safe. So we get uh, information from the National Hurricane Center and then from our local National Weather Service office in Jacksonville that helps us understand what the local impacts could be. Steve Woodard, director of the Duval County EOC, says they began monitoring a potential hurricane as soon as a disturbance formed deep in the Atlantic. When a tropical system sets its sight on the North Florida region and the First Coast, the EOC becomes active. As a storm gets closer, we'll bring more people into the Emergency Operations Center representing all the various city agencies and departments, some of our federal partners and state partners. It all happens right here in this room. The mayor of Jacksonville, along with mayors from Baldwin, Atlanta Beach, Neptune Beach and Jacksonville Beach, all gather with representatives from various city agencies, the military and JTA. This space becomes a literal think tank. Their primary focus is to keep the entire community as safe as possible during a storm. From Public Works to the Sheriff's Office to JFRD, uh, the Electric Authority, JTA, the Airport Authority, our federal partners from the military bases, U.S. Coast Guard. We bring all those people here to the Emergency Operations Center where we can coordinate our activities and make sure that our plans are good and then execute those plans. We work with school board very closely uh, as well to set up our shelters, uh, most of which are in schools, and then that's where JTA comes in to help us as, uh, with that part of the evacuation plan uh, with shelters. And to ensure that JTA is ready to roll and assist during an evacuation, getting people to and from shelters, transit officials say they too have to make sure their own preparedness plan is intact. Uh, we still uh, start to prepare very early, even through the off season of hurricane season, uh, making sure our plans, policies, procedures are all updated every year. Uh, and once we, we do think that a storm is coming, we ramp up our uh, preparedness activities. Uh, we ensure that each department and division uh, is ready to staff uh, its locations as necessary. Uh, we ensure that all of our buses and fuel tanks uh, and above ground storage fuel tanks are full. And when the order comes to evacuate, the JTA is ready to help move people out of harm's way. And when the uh, mayor calls for evacuations, the JTA has predetermined pickup spots uh, throughout the city that uh, the residents can go to uh, to be transported to a uh, shelter, whether it's a special needs shelter or a general population shelter. Jirasi says those pickup spots are located at various schools throughout the city. People needing to evacuate to a city shelter will be picked up there by a JTA bus and taken to appropriate shelters designated by the EOC. And folks needing the facilities of a special needs shelter must register with the city and a JTA Connection Paratransit Service vehicle will come to pick you up. And Woodard reminds us that if you do find yourself needing to retreat to a shelter, be sure to bring your hurricane supply kit along with you. Having all of the necessary materials that you need to bring with you to a shelter, your medications, insurance papers, other important documents, food, water, that you might want to bring with you when you're coming to a shelter. And because of the COVID-19 pandemic, the shelter environment will be just a bit different than previous experiences. And in general, we'll be providing more space for people, uh, whereas in the past, uh, people have been allocated about 60 square feet, which isn't a whole lot. Uh, we'll be expanding that to over 100 feet to give people a little bit more room, 
uh, so they feel more comfortable in the shelter. And when a hurricane looms, the JTA can take measures to protect its fleet if necessary. The buses can be moved to other satellite locations, so once the storm passes, mass transit can resume operating as quickly as possible. And here's something that many of you may have seen in your mail. It's the City of Jacksonville Preparedness and Response Guide. Woodard tells me that over 430,000 of these were mailed to residents in Jacksonville, and it's also available online at jacksready.com. And if you turn to page 22, there's information about the JTA and the transit services we provide when an evacuation order is given, and also how to get in touch with us if you have any questions. And Bill, would it recommends that everyone take a serious look at this and be sure to keep it handy. Bill? Great advice, Eugene. Thank you, as always. Now, the fight to find qualified employees continues in every sector of today's job market. Everywhere you look, you will see help wanted or we're hiring signs. And the JTA is not immune to those needs, especially when it comes to the need for professional bus drivers. So JTA has upped the ante in its search for the best drivers available. Along with its generous health care and benefits package, the authority is now offering large signing bonuses to new driver candidates. Qualified candidates can apply at JTAFLA.com for upcoming training classes. Now, JTA is well known throughout the U.S. for its innovative ideas. Cities across the country have contacted the authority to learn and understand how it completely changed its bus operations in what it called route optimization. And as we've chronicled here on Making Moves over the past two to three years, other transit agencies are tapping into the JTA system of excellence, especially when it comes to autonomous vehicles. So it was no surprise when a group of transportation executives traveled to Jacksonville from Atlanta last month to see exactly how JTA does things. So this is our construction capital programs area, system development, planning, as well as automation. For this group of men and women, it was more than just a tour. It was a time of discovery. And that's why we wanted to come, because we want to see and experience it for ourselves. They're executives with the Atlanta Region Transit Link Authority, also known as the ATL. They made the decision to make a two-day fact-finding trip to the JTA with the goal of seeing everything, and we mean everything. Leaders say it was an opportunity to listen, learn, and lead the way for important advancements in their own community. It's been our experience that JTA uh, has sort of begun to cross that threshold already and doing some pretty innovative, interesting, cool stuff, honestly, and we wanted to come down here and learn from what you all are doing. While it may not initially seem like Jacksonville and Atlanta have a whole lot in common, this group says not so fast. When we think of Metro Atlanta, there are a lot of similarities geographically. So learning how JTA serves the citizens over such a broad geographic region has direct applicability to the type of work and planning we do in the Atlanta area. In fact, it's the common challenges and needs between the two cities that make this trip that much more important to ATL leadership. One example is pedestrian safety and the work that JTA continues to do in this area. And you can see it all around me here on the South Bank with this road diet project. Because where you say that Jacksonville is like on the top of the charts for pedestrian um, accidents, well, we are too in the state of Georgia and particularly within the county in which I serve. So just that mere exercise of how to keep our pedestrians safe. So we send it from here to the roadside unit to the top of the triangle back to the vehicle to process it. So what were some of their biggest takeaways and places of inspiration? One, the Ultimate Urban Circulator, or U2C, and JTA's innovative work with testing and deploying autonomous vehicles. But also, at the same time, reimagining what that is going to be in the next five to ten years, uh, and keeping up with the industry as it changes, as it evolves, that it moves into this next phase of its existence, the, the, the autonomy of the vehicles that are that's coming quickly for all of us. When me and you are driving, we kind of know, right. if we get through part of the intersection and it goes yellow, we got enough time. Right. You got to build that into your programming based on your speed, right? And then there are the regional partnerships that stretch beyond JTA, impacting the region at large. Everything from the Express Select Service 
to some of the partnerships, even with the school systems, on STEM technology and STEM knowledge. So not only looking at things that will serve Jacksonville, but really are advancing the industry. Finally, they say it's the people, dedicated employees who work with the big picture in mind. Thinking about how what is being done here can support uh, transit uh, and the automotive industry broadly. Uh, it, they're not just focused on solving their own problems, they're focused on trying to solve our collective problems. Uh, um, I'm, I'm grateful for that. When it's all said and done, and whether they're from Atlanta or Jacksonville, leaders say this type of collaborative work isn't just about transit and transportation, but about long-term regional transformation. Because at the end of the day, people don't see jurisdictional lines. The problems that persist here in Jacksonville are the same problems that we deal with in Georgia. And when we can come together and bring solutions to the table and bounce ideas off of one another, it's going to create a phenomenal future for us collectively. I'm so excited. Executives with the ATL say as much as they enjoyed coming here to Jacksonville, their hope is that one day they too can host visitors from JTA in their city. In the South Bank, Vicki Pierre, JTA Making Moves. If there's one constant about being a college student, you're likely broke most of the time and that can make it difficult to get to the places you need or want to go. Places like school, shopping, the beach, and visiting your friends. Now, a new pilot program from the JTA can help you with your travel needs, and it's not only fast, it's also completely free. Transportation and JTA is about giving students options. So, with this pass, students have the option to use it once a week, five times a week or even on the weekends to go to their job. To be eligible for the free ride program, you must be a full-time or half-time student at any one of these colleges or universities. Jacksonville University, the University of North Florida, FSCJ, Edward Waters College, Trinity Baptist College, and Chamberlain College. With our partnership with IDME and Token Transit, students can register for the program. Once they complete the eligibility process, then they will receive a free pass on their phone. To get the free pass, students will register with IDME at tokentransit.com backslash Jacksonville backslash college to verify their college enrollment. It's a process JTA's revenue manager, India Freeman, says takes less than three minutes and can be done literally anywhere. I envision students doing this in their dorm room, in their car, at home, any place, because you can register for the pro program any place. Your unlimited ride free pass will be delivered to your smartphone almost immediately after your college enrollment has been verified. All you have to do is then scan the barcode on the ticket validator when you board your JTA bus and off you go. I think the thing we want to think about, even students that have a car, they want to consider registering for the program because it gives you more transportation options when you're going back and forth to school. Having a bus pass on your phone ready to go at any time gives you the ability, the feeling of independence. It also gives you the option to save some money, and most, most important for students, they can reduce their carbon footprint by riding a bus. The free ride pilot program expires on December 31st. When we come back, how JTA is partnering with a local nonprofit to help fight breast cancer. More on that story when we return. When you adopt a shelter pet, you discover their unique mix of all kinds of traits. Where did Wiley go? Where's Wiley? Ah, oh, there she is. Pa? Do you remember being an ancient wolf? Do you ever feel the call of the wild? You're a renegade cop, and I'm a con woman with nothing to prove. But together, we could really solve this murder. They're a little bit of a lot of things. But all of them are pure love. My mother was always very familiar with her neighborhood. But one day, she stopped at the stop sign for much longer than usual and uh, she didn't know whether she should go forward or, or turn, and she wasn't even really sure where she was at. It was very unsettling for her. I felt so much better after my son told me, Mom, I don't want you to worry or be afraid. I'll be there for you, and we'll figure it out. Welcome back to Making Moves. In construction news, JTA met with the public one final time before it begins construction on its San Pablo Road project between Beach and Atlantic Boulevards. More than 120 interested citizens came out to watch a video 
review several large display boards and discuss the details of the project with project team members. JTA is expanding the current two-lane roadway to three lanes with a continuous turn lane. The added turn lane is expected to eliminate backups on San Pablo when vehicles are stopped waiting for a break in traffic to turn into, into one of the housing developments. Currently, traffic comes to a screeching halt since there is no turn lane available. In addition to the much-needed turn lane, JTA is adding new sidewalks, bike lanes, along with drainage and utility improvements. Construction on San Pablo Road is scheduled to start this fall and take approximately two years to complete. The people of JTA care about the Jacksonville community. Each year, the staff contributes to help local nonprofits through its annual giving campaign. Its DBE program assists small businesses in getting ahead. And the JTA Cares Initiative has provided clothing to those who are without so they can go get a job interview or start a new career. Now JTA is partnering with Pink Ribbon Jacks to raise awareness about the need for mammograms as a way to help identify and prevent breast cancer. Because of JTA and not Ford, we are turning, the, you're helping us turn the Acosta Bridge pink. Uh, JTA is wrapping a bus with breast cancer messaging on how to get the free mammogram or if you are able to, how to fund a free mammogram. So we're doing a variety of things to help get the message out into the community. JTA is such a philanthropic organization in the sense of bringing the community together and making sure that a diverse population of people are taken care of. Pink Ribbon Jacks is celebrating its 15th year of raising funds for breast cancer research. In honor of that milestone, the group is hoping to raise $450,000, enough for 1,500 mammograms. We're not asking people for money. We're saying, how many mammograms do you want to fund? $10 each, 30 people, that's a mammogram. Yeah. So that people see that the dollars they donate actually equal lives. Because treat it, being able to treat is being able to survive. So if, if caught early, it's 98% treatable, which equals survivable. Since 2006, PRJ has raised over $2 million to help the fight against breast cancer, all of it staying right here in Jacksonville. If you'd like to help, you can donate by visiting their website at pinkribbonjacks.org. And that wraps up this season 13 finale of Making Moves. We thank you for joining us, and we hope you'll tune in again soon as we start our 14th year of bringing you the latest in transportation news, economic development, and all things JTA. If you want to watch any of our shows again or catch ones that you missed, we welcome you to check out our YouTube channel. A direct link to our YouTube page is available at JTAFLA.com. I'm Bill Milnes for everyone here at Making Moves. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time when we kick off Season 14 from our brand new studio at the JRTC. Take care, everybody.